damn, Chiral, coming in with that fresh new sprite. Welcome to the Two Schmo Show. Fuck, those things took me forever to draw. They look really good, though. Thank you. Uh, like, I will say uh, mine took the longest because I kept fucking up my eyes. I had, like, one giant bulging mm -hmm. eye. I wish I could show people this. But it made me look like fucking Quasimodo from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. And I couldn't tell what was going yeah. on with my sprite. Yours was, like, yep, instant. There's a reason. What? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason artists like to just, like, mirror the eyes. Because it's just so much easier. Yeah, I refuse to do that, but I totally understand yeah. it. Yeah. Um, welcome, everybody. I hope you had a great Christmas, Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa, whichever the fucking holiday you celebrate. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is the Two Schmell Show. Um. So, how was your Christmas, Carol? My Christmas was all right. I'd even go so far as to say it was good. Yeah. I would describe my mm -hmm. Christmas as merry. That's an apt description. Thank you. I didn't get a Christmas last year, so it was nice. Oh. Well, that's it. That's good. Yeah. You got one this year. Fuck you, <laughs> iHeartMedia. <laughs> yeah. They made me work on Christmas for like a majority of the day. That's so fucked. And then they laid me off like two weeks later. <laughs> yeah, they did. Fuck that you. was so fucked. Fucked up. Ugh. I, 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 I could tell you more and more. Um, but anyway, how... Um, yeah. Did you we get got a Christmas miracle. We did? Yeah. Movies? For Christmas, the president pardoned war criminals. Hell yeah. Child killers everywhere. Rejoice. Yeah. Shit. I forgot about that. And just when you thought they couldn't stoop lower, they prove you're wrong. Um, I am how still many kind of shocked it? that they did that. There's been a lot. There was like three days of them. I'm pretty sure it's close to like 15 at this point. Um, big takeaway is that everybody who was involved in the uh, Mueller Russia probe, who is not Cohen or Cohen or Gates, I think two people who were cooperating with the investigation are the only people who are U.S. citizens that haven't been pardoned by Trump as a result of this now. Everyone else has been pardoned. Beautiful. Yeah. That's so... so uh, what's the word I'm looking for? And then the nice little cherry on top is a handful of actual war criminals who... Uh, merc American mercenaries working for Blackwater who opened fire on Iraqi uh, women and children who were unarmed. And in order to stop them, the people who they were working with as mercenaries had to turn their guns on them just so they would stop, or it would have been worse. You know, you had me until you said Iraqi, then I kind of just dropped out. But I'm yeah. just... But I'm just... Yeah. Convicted for life sentence, and what do you know? Not our president. So, yeah. That's he won't let something happen to those good gentlemen. Those fine people. Those fine people. They're sending their best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wasn't one of them like re somehow related to the DeVosses? Uh, yeah. Well, all of them, technically. <laughs> so, Betsy DeVos, her last name, her maiden name, is Prince. Her brother is the owner of Blackwater, who hired these people. And what is Blackwater? Blackwater is an American... They're a group of mercenaries, essentially. Literally guns for hire anywhere in the world, anything. Hmm. Beautiful that, you know, a group of mercenaries has connections to our education system. Yeah. Fucking beautiful. Huh. Yep. So, but there, oh, oh man, there's but, been so much, um, like that was, that was like the big story on the 23rd and the 24th. Yes. Then on Christmas day, we had the situation in Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. Yes. 
where there's been some more information that's come out about it now. Um, a 63-year-old man, I believe they've announced his identity, um, Anthony Quinn Warner, who is believed to have died from the explosion itself. Oh, it has its own Wikipedia page now. Nice. Nice. Wikipedia. Um, this person drove an RV that was set to be a car bomb into downtown Nashville, Tennessee, and detonated it at 6.30 a.m. Christmas morning, apparently with the intent being to cause damage to an AT&T network hub that was in the building the van was parked in front of. As a result of it, wire, it was a Wi-Fi and wireless communications in like Nashville down to Alabama were knocked out for like a few days. It wasn't really that big, but the whole thing is just kind of, it's bizarre because no, there's not any confirmation yet as to motive. We know what happened we don't know why it happened. And they have a pretty good idea that this is the guy who did it and that he died from the blast. But there's plenty of conspiracy theories out there as to why this happened. You know, is this just a terrorist attack? Um, was he specifically targeting this AT&T network switch because of, you know, 5G conspiracy theory type of bullshit? I was about to ask. Was this just... Yeah, right. But is the... there's also the very real possibility this is just garden variety white nationalist terrorism because we just don't know at this point. I remember like a week ago, there was some pretty small stories about people who were arrested before they could carry out similar where they're trying to commit these attacks on American infrastructure to try and, you know, cripple the economy, cripple the system kind of shit. I thought they were pro the economy. The fuck? Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to say because these are the kinds of people who are so fucked up that they're literally trying to start a civil war. That's yeah. their goal. Yeah. Civil war at any cost. Yeah. The fuck? So, yeah, you know, really fucked up. But the strangest part about this is that and there's a video that confirms this prior to the RV being detonated, uh, seemingly from the RV itself, a message was playing over, over loudspeakers telling people to evacuate the area because this was going to explode at a certain time. And it did, but it gave enough time ahead of time for the, the police to be able to evacuate the whole area. So there's no deaths, and like I've heard between three and six injuries, but none of them life-threatening. Well, isn't that just the safest uh, public terrorist attack in a while? Right. One of the comparisons I've heard from that aspect of it is that it's apparently what people in the IRA did during their conflicts in Ireland as a sort of show of control where they could go into an area, say, we're going to detonate a bomb at this time, evacuate the area, still be able to detonate that bomb as like a, you know, we can detonate a bomb wherever and whenever we want, even giving you guys notice. Look at all the people we could have killed if we wanted to kind of thing. Oh, shit. That's a power move. Yeah. Yeah, and it is. It exactly is. Okay, I'm not afraid of many people in this world. Besides, you know, the insanely powerful, like, Putin or something like that. But, like, an average Joe who worked with the IRA scares the living fuck out of me. Oh, yeah. The IRA no, is business. so fucked. Yep. There's this meme I love that says, it's like a guy wearing a MAGA hat. And he says, I'm a Republican. And it's just this random dude who's like, so am I. He's like, what state are you from? And he goes, Ireland, and pulls out a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then we'll fuck yeah, with the IRA. I actually watched, this is kind of morbid, but uh, it was Christmas, it might have been Christmas Day. Um, after hearing about, about this and the connections to the IRA, I actually watched Patriot Games again. Oh, jeez. Tom Clancy one, because that's what that's based on. How'd so, that go? Yeah, it's a bit morbid. Yeah. It's a good movie, it holds up. It's yeah. a good movie. It's good. It's Harrison Ford being Harrison Ford in his prime, you know, what's not to like? Did you ever and Sean Bean, Sean Bean in his stereotypical villain role? Did you ever hear that um 
interview where people asked if he was a force ghost in the last jedi sorry not last Jedi. i did yeah rise of skywalker and he said what the fuck is this force ghost yeah i get it but it also kind of pisses me off like he's so so fucking checked out at this point oh yeah i get it but still come on at least pretend to care no never yeah and he doesn't is Indiana Jones force sensitive? <laughs> what? It just made me think of Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. How bad that is. I've never seen it. I haven't seen a single Indiana Jones it's movie. So... Really? Okay. Well, I have to fix that. Like the first the first one is good. It's a bit dated, like, for some practical effects at this point, but there's still practical effects, so they're not that bad. But it is good. It's a good movie. I'm pretty sure I would enjoy it. Second and third ones are fine. I'm pretty sure I would enjoy it because everybody who's told me this is, like, based off Indiana Jones, I've liked. Yeah. But I've never actually seen the source material. No, it's good. First movie is good. Second and third movie, less good, but not bad. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is bad. It's just bad. Shit. Okay, then. Because they brought in Shia LaBeouf. It's just like, what are you fucking doing? He was Why big back then, this? though. Not at that point. Like, Wasn't he just riding the Transformers high at that point? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I can double check it, but that sounds right. Still had to, you know, he's still innocent innocent before he got the taste of human in his mouth. Yes. So this was just after the first Transformers movie. Mm. Someone had a busy agent. Yeah. He did Eagle Eye, though, and that's actually not a bad movie. Sorry. Because should I... it's not Shia LaBeouf being Shia LaBeouf. He's actually acting. Shia LaBeouf in the 2000s is what Tom Holland is to now. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Yeah. But, you know, worse in almost every way. Oh, yeah. Shia LaBeouf crawled so Tom could walk. Yep. Ugh. What else came out while we were gone for a week? So, while we're on movies, we actually had a pretty solid spread of movies come out this last week. Yes. One of which you have seen. Yes, my girlfriend and I watched Soul. So, I have like three different perspectives on this movie. Which one would you prefer? The jazz musician perspective, the guy who likes Pixar movies perspective, or the average moviegoer? Let's start with the just sort of average moviegoer and work from there. So, it's good. It's Pixar. Yeah. Yeah, it is the... Most Pixar, Pixar, Pixar film I've ever Pixar'd. Mm-hmm. Um, it's better than Onward. It's probably the better of the two 2020 films. Uh, if you liked Inside Out and Coco, you'll like it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more mature, I, th- I feel, than most films have yep. any right to be, especially for Pixar. Um, I could see this really messing with a kid's head. Because it's very philosophical in nature. Like... Yeah, yeah, I've heard... That was one of the things that I saw on Twitter. Someone was just like... Pixar then, Toy Story. Toys being toys. Pixar now, what does it mean to live? Or something like that. Oh, my favorite joke I've seen out of this. And it, forgive me, it's a slightly racist one. Uh, <laughs> Pixar in the beginning. What if toys had feelings? Pixar in the 2000s. What if cars had feelings? Pixar now. What if black people had feelings? Oh I know it's terrible. That's terrible. Um. Anyway, it's very much like contemplative on what life is. It's like the big question of the film is, is living worth dying for? Which is incredibly fucked up. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I had a big smile on my face the whole time. 
That's good. Um, it's better than some of the other movies that we're going to be going over, at least. As a Pixar fan, I am a little upset with yes. the ending. Okay. The ending? Okay, ready for this? I mm. the, the ending is one of the biggest fucking cop-outs I've ever seen. I knew it was going to happen. But if they could have made this ending go to what I thought it was going to be, without spoiling anything, there's a choice yeah. at the ending. And there's a mature choice, and then there's the we're rated G for a reason choice. Mm, getcha. Yeah. And I wanted the very mature ending, because I would have been like, perfect capstone, perfect movie, 10 out of 10. But because yep. of that choice, I made it go down to like an 8. And as for the jazz musician perspective, uh, for a big movie like this, where millions of people are going to watch it, to have jazz in it made yep. me very happy. Um, and I know jazz is very much an iceberg where you have to start at the tip and get down deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a good introduction to jazz. Yep. They don't pull punches, not like Boomer Jazz. Yes, not like Boomer. That's, that's probably good. Yeah, it's a good insert. I don't know if this would necessarily make anybody ever have an interest in jazz, but it's definitely a good, like, oh, look, jazz. It, yep. Yeah. I could tell they really did have a lot of care for the jazz. I just wish there was more jazz in it, like. In the way that Coco was such mm -hmm. a celebration of Mexican tradition in Mexican music. Yep. I wish this was like as big of a celebration of jazz, but it's very much stuck in its philosophical approach that the jazz is kind of brought to the background after like the first act. Mm -hmm. One of the perspectives I've heard on it <clears throat> and from the same idea of Coco being, you know, sort of well. <laughs> So I've, I've only seen most of the people's put in this through Twitter, which yes. isn't a great medium for that kind of a thing, but it does get a lot of opinions out there. Yes. And one that I saw that was gaining a lot of traction, which to me says that there's a lot of people who agree with it, is the idea that it's a good movie, but in terms of a sort of um, a Pixar movie with appropriate black representation it fails to a point because it falls into the same problem that pretty much every animated film like this does that has you know es essentially a full black cast and focuses very heavily on um the experiences that these people are having by turning them into something else in the movie you know like what do you mean turning them into something because else? it goes from oh having yes yes to being in the soul world or whatever the fuck it is. Yes. It's not necessarily... I mean, it is. It is still these people, but it's not showing them as they are. And it's the same thing with, like, the princess and the frog, where it's, like, ten minutes into the movie, and it's a frog that's the main character, not a black woman. Yes. No. I, that was the perspective that I had heard, that it is a good movie, but seeing that same thing happen again was frustrating for them. I thought it was going to frustrate me a lot more. Um, I think they preemptively knew this was going to frustrate people because I'll say they spend probably a third yep. of the movie in the soul world. And then yep. they go back to the, um, you know, black representation after that. Yep. Um, I would have wanted more, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a fan of black culture. I'm not going to appropriate yep. it anytime soon like some rappers, but... Um, <laughs> I do enjoy seeing it representate represented. Um, yep. Like I'll say this, probably one of my favorite anime movies is Spider Verse, and I really like the structure it brings to, you know, representing the black community. Um, yep. What what else do I have to say to get my woke card? Uh, I think you're pretty much reparations. So you got it. C congratulations, rubber stamp. Thank you. Uh, yep, yep. I'm safe for one more week. But yeah, no, I highly recommend Soul. Um, probably don't go watching it if you have bad death anxiety. Because mm. I could totally see young me who had de death anxiety freaking out over this film. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's an interesting capstone to uh, a trilogy of films that Pixar has been doing with Inside Out and Coco, that this is like a fusion yep. between the two. Yep. And... So I have one last question about Soul before yeah. we move on. Yes. How do, how, if, if you do, and how do you think your viewing experience of it was at home changed in any way by having it be streamed first rather than seeing it in theaters first did the do you think that mattered yeah it mattered after i saw the movie i would say okay. i feel i would have appreciated it a lot more in a theater mm-hmm. but i also enjoyed having time to just hang out with my girlfriend on a couch um yep. and we could bring in our own snacks instead of traditional popcorn um yep. I don't feel it's a movie that many people are going to feel is broken by not being a theater. Like I said, the well, inter- I, yeah, yeah. I think from almost every movie, the average person would not give a shit if they saw it on their couch or in a theater. Yes. Most people just don't care about the improved, you know, visual aspect or audio audio aspect of being in a theater when they can just stay at home and save gas to save money on food and tickets and just watch it from a subscription service they're already paying for. I want to see a couple of these scenes on a big screen. Like, um, yep. there's like these background B shots, like beauty shots of the mm-hmm. city, which I swear to God, Cairo could have been yep. photos and I would have not known. Really? Yeah. It's yeah, well, beautiful. That is interesting. It's my favorite animated version of New York so far. Yeah. That's good to know. I and I haven't seen it, of course, so I don't know. But from the marketing I've seen of it, this is a sort of music-centric movie. So I could definitely appreciate wanting to at least see it in a theater for that aspect of just having, you know, appropriate movie-quality audio. Uh, it's not uh, as music-centric uh, as Coco. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's a good comparison. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would have guessed it was on par with it, so that's actually good to know. No, I would say this movie has got a lot more philosophical questions it's asking rather than a song to sing. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And all the music's instrumental. Mm-hmm. Um Cool. Yeah. Also you can really tell the soundtrack was by Trent Reznor. Yeah. He's every, got a style. Every time a song came on, I'm like, Hey Trent, how you doing? <laughs> yep that's cool mm-hmm. so moving from there yes um the cruise a new age Damn. this one unlike soul this one is out in theaters right now it has a box office release oh god in the u.s somehow oh no um it's apparently doing i wouldn't say well it's doing fine which kind of surprises me but it's a kids movie this one is much more strictly a kids movie than soul is yes has a target audience and it's pretty clear Uh, although let me let me look this up real quick because if that's right what one sec that's not the right search yeah oh no guy i always get my ryan's mixed up so I saw Emma Stone and Ryan Reynolds, and I was like, wait a minute. Are they just doing La La Land again? <laughs> no, that's Ryan. That's that's the other Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Yes. Ryan the lesser. <laughs> the lesser Ryan. <laughs> the lesser Ryan. He uh, Detective Pikachu Ryan. Yep. So yeah, this is a movie. It is released. I have no expectations for it. I, I will ever see it. It looks terrible to me, you know? Is this a an Illumination film? This is DreamWorks. Okay, it's not Illumination. It has that fakey, cheap animation look that Illumination does to it. I don't like that. Real talk, um, bad news, brah. They're both owned by the same parent company, so they're pretty much oh, going to merge. You fucking go, no wonder. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, if Illumination gets the naming priority over DreamWorks, I will fucking murder someone. I think they're going to keep them separate, uh, separate because of the whole marketing aspect of it. I hope so. But it really wouldn't surprise me if they're in the same building at this point. Yeah. this is I, They probably have the same people working on it in reality. Yeah. 
Um, for this, though, I, this is the kind of thing that I would expect from Illumination. Because it just looks like such a dumb concept. The whole Crudes thing in general just looks stupid to me. What are you talking about, man? It's 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 a beautiful film. I have I have no fucking clue. I I, I cannot know. get over I mean, the eyebrows. That's part of it. It's just the general the backgrounds and the environment looks good. I would expect that of DreamWorks. It's like the direction, the vision for it just doesn't it doesn't look like something I'd want to look at for two and a half hours. Agreed. This is definitely one of those films for that you put on to like babysit the kids. Yeah, pretty much. Just looks cheap. Yeah. And they've got maybe this is just a weird thing with these promotional shots, but it looks like they have the promotional shots were like supposed to be in a lower resolution, and they've just upscaled the shit out of them. Like it, I'll copy this and send it to you on Discord, but there's just like artifacting everywhere. Oh, I'm scared. There's like an outline around both of the characters. And it's still there in the picture I sent you. So it's not just some weird upscaling thing on Rotten Tomatoes website. There's what just the artifacting fuck? all in their hair. There's an outline, like a halo around them. It just looks weird. It does. It's like, they, it's like they copied and pasted the characters from something else into this background and tried to airbrush over it, but did a bad job. I wouldn't be surprised if this is probably test footage that they had at one point and they were just trying know. to get marketing stuff ready. And this was a key shot that they knew was going to be in the final film. But then you have this one. This is their cover shot. Oh God. This is their cover shot. Look at the grass in the background. Yes. Underneath like sort of uh, left of the tiger, just under her feet. That's just like practically a flat texture of grass. Mm -hmm. I agree. It just looks so cheap. Like, there was no thought put into it. You know what they probably did is that the, the whole background is probably just a singular image that was drawn or something like that. And then they I'm put sure. the 3D assets over it. I don't know. You know what this reminds me of? What's that? There's this very specific thing that whenever I see these black, I mean, these backgrounds with uh, very flat textures that are obviously drawn. Um, You don't have a 3DS, do you? No, I don't. Okay, so uh, Pokemon Mega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Mm -hmm. There's a shot where they try to use force perspective to make it look like the... You know in the original games how there's that big fucking volcano in the background everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. So they try to do this shot where you can see the volcano like right when you get there. But it's mm -hmm. very obvious it's a flat texture on um, yep. yeah, a skybox. And I'm trying to... It reminds me of that. It totally reminds me of that. Um, what? I'm going to try to find it. Now, when I find it, I'll send it to you. But as it stands right now, um, you can talk about something else. Yeah, sure. So we can move over to Wonder Woman '84. Oh 1984? shit! What, what is it? Wonder Woman 1984. Big so this is the other is watching. real release that we have for like box office release. Yes. It's being heralded as the best box office release since COVID. No. Because, yeah, no shit. It's like the only one. Yeah. That's... I... Right now in Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 65% out of like some 300 reviews. And I'm kind of surprised it's that high. Because everything that I've heard about it has been fairly negative found it oh yeah that is kind of weird yeah you can very tell like very much tell where the three yeah. assets end and then there's like the wall yep yep um yeah uh, i will say this is this like this picture is perfectly exact an example of why i hate pokemon in 3d yeah it just takes all of the life out of the game my my main my main problem is they were taking a game and trying to make it make it look like the two D assets just in three D, yep. and they yep. didn't bother like, adapting it. Yeah, this looks like something someone made in like Unity by yeah. just copy and pasting assets. 
because yeah. it's in 3D, there's different expectations for what a 3D game is going to look like. And they were able to cut a lot of corners by keeping the game in 2D for as long as they did. And moving it to 3D, they just tried to keep cutting the same corners, and it doesn't work. I agree. Thankfully, they learned enough to not continue to fuck it up that badly on the Switch, but it still is not a good-looking game compared to what the Switch can do. Oh, I know. Breath of the Wild all the way, man. Yeah. Um, Back to Wonder Woman, though. Back to Wonder Woman, yes. Yes. I don't know how I feel about it because I still haven't seen the original Wonder Woman, which is a shame because it's on my list. I will say I really don't like the original Wonder Woman. Not from, like, a story, anything perspective, nothing like that. I just hate how inconsistent the universe that they're in is. What do you mean? Like, the DCEU? Uh, the, with, with Wonder Woman's powers. Oh. Where there's just no consistency between, like, like, okay, when you ask the question of, like, what can Batman do? When you're looking at the Dark Knight trilogy, there's a very finite limit to what Batman can have. Yes. Right? You know what his limits are, and it's constantly being pressured and tested in different ways by the people he goes up against. For Wonder Woman, in the original Wonder Woman that's set in World War One, to me there's always this feeling of, oh, what does Wonder Woman need to do? Let's give her the power to do that, rather than working at it from the other way. There's not a framework that they started with for what Wonder Woman is capable of to then build the story from there. It's like they're just giving her whatever powers she needs in order to do what she wants to do. Okay. And it leads to these moments where, to my perspective at least, she's like using her lasso to fly across great distances, and it just looks like shit because there's this weird parallax effect that they do to show it, but it makes it look like she at the same time has no mass, no momentum. Like she's just standing in place yet at the same time, you know, that's not the case because she's clearly moving and it's this disconnect between what she's doing and what they're saying she's doing to me. At least when she flies with her lasso, she like, uh, rotating it all around like a helicopter. No, it's just like a big whip. And then she goes, that's sad. But then there's also these sick circumstances where, um, you know, you know how in in superhero movies in general, the person does the big jump off the tie at the tall thing and they land on the ground unharmed and there's the oh big God. crater. Yes. The big crater happens because, you know, you just jumped off of a fucking 10-story building. There's going to be some effect from that. And that's a very obvious way of doing it. In Wonder Woman, she does the same thing and there's nothing. The ground stays untouched. And I don't know how I feel about that. that they, they don't match up with what you expect to happen. Hmm. And then there's a dumb fight scene at the end where it, it's just dumb. Like, the actual story up until the last act is good and interesting. But there's just all of these scenes that it is just Wonder Woman being Wonder Woman that just pulled me, at least. It pulls me out of it. and I can't suspend my disbelief as to what's going on on the screen. Are you sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> Are like, you sure you're magical, just magical, not... literal child of Zeus person has magic powers? You know, whatever. Fine. But you mean to tell me she just did a 180 kickoff turn from that car and it didn't move an inch? Go fuck yourself. You're wrong. I think you're it's just having a hard work. time accepting that it's a woman doing it. And then that is what gets brought up, of course. Yeah. And that's a lot of what I've been seeing about Wonder Woman 1984 is that people are just legitimately not liking the story or the pacing or some aspect of it. And people pull that out where it's like, oh, you just don't like it because it's a woman. Like, no, I hated Iron Man 3, too, because it's a shit story. Damn. But it's a Christmas movie. You can't hate it. It's a Christmas movie. Yes, I can. <laughs> Frosty is horrible. I'll say that, too. Oh, the fuck Frosty. Frosty series is so bad. You want you want to hear uh, my confession that may, almost made my girlfriend slap me? Yes. I don't like any of the Rake and Bass movies. The Rake and Bass movies? I actually don't know. Those are the stop-motion Christmas movies. 
break and uh, how is that spelled? Because I'm apparently spelling it wrong. Um, fuck. like is this like the Rudolph ones? Yeah, the Rudolph ones. The Santa Claus is coming to town. Frosty. As far as I know, is Rudolph? I feel like Rudolph is made by different ones. By different people than Frosty, because that's like a fifty-year gap. Mm, I'm seeing both of them made by Rakin Bass. Oh shit! They made the Swan Princess in 1994. Because there's also like fifty different <laughs> Rudolph movies. Unfortunately, that's what you get for having your song in the public domain. I put their Wikipedia article in there. They, their Wikipedia has a whole thing called the Rudolph era. The Rudolph era. I didn't realize they were Russian. They apparently had Rudolph comic books. Ew. Uh, they did King Kong, King Kong escapes. Hmm. Rankin Bat. Filmography. Shit, they did a okay. lot. So I would say the only one that I tolerate is the Rudolph, like the first Rudolph. And even then, I can say it's not good. It's just purely nostalgia. They apparently did Coneheads. Oh, wonderful. No, but yeah, Frosty was traditionally animated. It wasn't stop motion. Yeah. I can respect the stop motion a lot more than the cheap old actual animation i can to an extent like just because it's because it reminds for me it reminds me of Wallace and gromit oh yeah you're the fanboy so did you ever see curse of the were rabbit probably i actually don't think so i like it oh 2005 definitely not it's their whole. I don't think I've ever. I don't think I've watched any Wallace and Gromit from this century. Damn, dude. I was born in the wrong generation for stop motion. Fuck. <laughs> um, uh, I saw. Yeah, a maybe I have seen this. This does look kind of familiar. If I have, I've seen it like just randomly on TV or something like that. Not like actual sat down and watched it on purpose. I remember I saw this comic recently. It was like a teenage girl listening to Despacito and she like sheds a tear and says, I was born in the wrong generation. And then it says year <laughs> 3065. God. Yeah. Despacito. Uh, back on topic though for Wonder Woman. Yes. Um, I am basing most of my like critical review of it from Angry Joe's movie review that they did. Because they actually had a pretty in-depth spoiler review for it that showed why they didn't like it as much as they did. Hmm. Well, isn't Angry Joe like a super big DC fan? He is. I was about yeah. to say, that would make sense. And the three of them have all watched all of the DC movies and rated them. I'm sorry. And for all of them, this was their lowest rated DC film. Even higher than Batman v Superman lower than damn yeah uh justice league was i think two of theirs lowest before this and this is below justice league for them holy shit they all gave it a three out of ten individually a three out of ten yeah and seeing the reasoning why i don't doubt it there's huge parts of it that just don't make sense Hmm. and are just dumb where it's like the same thing that I feel like they did in the first one where they have a thing that they want to happen and rather than you know having the story be told naturally they have the story work in a way that leads up to the thing that they want to happen okay yeah I'll give you that but you must uh, you know 
pray away your sins by reading a copy of Jane Austen for attacking this uh, product of fem- feminism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll be 50 Jane Austens for you, young man. <laughs> what else came out while we, during this Christmas season? We also had Breach. Breach? Which I had not heard at all about, but has Bruce Willis in it. Fuck. And it's like, are they trying to ride the coattails of Armageddon or something here? What the fuck? I heard Bruce Willis has been doing some shady shit where he's been uh, making movies that are purposely failing to evade taxes. I don't know if that's true. This this did poorly. It's like at 20% right now. 22 Okay. So there's going to be some fun reviews here. All of his current movies have been terrible, though. Yeah. Like, I think top to-, to bottom, he's not had a good movie in five years, I guess. What was his last good movie? Technically Glass. Oh, but, shit. But, like, that's pretty com- controversial to say. Yeah. Um. What else? He was himself in the Lego movie, too. Which I don't really think counts. It's weird to hear I'm the gonna, phrase. I'm gonna, if he's playing himself, I'm not going to count it. Don't. So the last successful movie he's had where he's not playing himself, so that's over 50% critically, was Looper in 2012. Fuck, I hated Looper. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's bad. But it at least looks better than some... Looper, it's at a 93%, though. I didn't like it. No. No, I did not like Looper, which is weird. I think I was the wrong age to really appreciate it. That might be it, but... Maybe. I would be interested to see it just because it looks like... It looks like it has some interesting sci-fi ideas, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay, no. So here's one. Same same year... No, I'm not going to count that. I'm going to skip over that. Still the same year, though. He was in Moonrise Kingdom, which is a Wes Anderson film. Oh, shit. Which is actually pretty damn good. Yeah, Wes Anderson. So that was... The last time he tried. The last time he tried. And then, like, immediately after that, he did Red 2 and it fell off a cliff. Fuck. I dated a girl who was, like, super into Red. And then, First like, Red movie's really good. Is Second it? one's horrible. Yeah. Oh, shit. And it's because he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. He, like, if you watch, I've done this because I have, my parents have Red and Red 2. The first Red movie is legitimately a good, entertaining, dumb action movie. Um, you watch the first one, he's clearly, you know, acting and trying, and then you go to the second one, and he's clearly not acting. He's just reading lines. Oh, fuck. He completely just gives up. Well, that scares me. Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel like there's, like, I don't want to call them boomer actors, but I feel like a lot of boomer actors have uh, checked out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the movie I skipped over because I think it's terrible is The Expendables 2, which is the who's who of boomer actors. It's the end game of boomer actors. Sylvester Stallone, Jason Statham, Jet Li, Dolph Lundgren, Chuck Norris. I'm, I'm not going to say Terry Crews. He's done some good stuff still. I love Terry Crews. And then apparently, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. There are a lot of people who just not. There's a bunch of people who just aren't listed in here, but I, Sylvester Stallone's on it twice. Okay. Insert joke yeah. about how he's so awesome to have a second billing. But Bruce Willis, and apparently he's counted as like screenwriter or some shit, which doesn't surprise me how bad that was. I'm just doing this for my fans. Yep. Bruce um, Willis is basically just a more cleaned up uh, Woody Harrelson. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I don't know. What's a boomer actor to you that hasn't given up yet? Um, Honestly, most of the female ones, the women. Oh, shit, like, you're right. Uh, oh, uh, Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren, yeah. 100% of uh, John Malkovich, too. I'm just looking at the red cast now. Shit. John Malkovich is exactly as much of a batshit insane person as he ever was. Have you seen Bird Box? No. <laughs> he's in that, and he's probably like the best actor in that mm-hmm. whole film. Um, 
I just remember because that was like the first time my girlfriend and I bonded <laughs> oh, over yeah. a movie. Yeah, John Malkovich is actually insane. Well, I mean, if you had to play Galbatorix in the fucking Aragon movie, wouldn't you go insane? <laughs> yes. It's enough to turn anyone. What was it that he, he he was in like a self titled movie, wasn't he? Being John Malkovich. Yeah. I'm not sure. It was something like that. I'm not finding it though. How long I, ago was that? I want to imagine Jeremy Irons and John Malkovich are still not over Aragon, and are, whenever they see <laughs> each other, they instantly like slip back into those characters because they're just not over that shit. Like it's some kind of traumatic event. Yep. But yeah, being John Malkovich, 99 or 93% on Rotten Tomatoes for a 1999 movie. That's actually pretty damn good. 1999. What a year to be alive. Yeah. I was three. I was. Well, when was this released? I was. Wait. I would have been two when this was released. October 29th, 1999. October 29th? Okay, yeah. October 29th. Yep. I was three. Hmm. Good year to be three. Then it was a good year to be four. And then after that, it was September 11th for like a whole year. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But, uh, Breach. Oh, yeah, Breach shit. We're making fun of Bruce. Let's see here. It. <laughs> This is from Film Week. It all more or less takes place in a high school basement or something. I think that's where they shot this thing after painting the walls gray. Bruce Willis <laughs> walks through, does that thing he does, and the movie's over. What's the thing he does? He 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 is but he bees Bruce Willis. He bees Bruce Willis. He bees Bruce Willis. Oh God. A minimal budget does not absolve a film from having horrible direction and writing. This alien cover, wait, this alien covenant slash the thing mashup doesn't deserve, doesn't serve up anything new. It serves up an utterly cringeworthy fashion. Sounds like Bruce Willis to me. Yeah. Breach has its moments of B minus movie fun, stemming from more than utterly ridiculous execution than a sincere effort to create a gripping space horror. Is Bruce Willis the monster in Breach? I don't think so. I think he's supposed to be like Ridley Scott's character in Alien. Fuck. But I actually have What even happens here? Fleeing a devastating plague on Earth, the inter an interstellar arc comes under attack from a new threat, a shaped... Oh, so it's literally just the thing. A shape-shifting alien force intent on slaughtering what's left of humanity. It's literally just the thing in space. Yeah. It's Alien uh, the thing. Breach isn't nearly as offensively lazy as most of Bruce Willis' recent direct-to-consumer action flicks, even if you'd be hard-pressed to ever call it genuinely good. I like how they're called straight-to-consumer. Yeah. Straight-to-boomer. More like it. Oh. So is it safe to say Bruce Willis is not, no longer badass? Yep. Cool. He peaked in 2012. Fuck. He peaked in the Lego movie, dude. <laughs> it's probably true. Now he just tells kids to get off his lawn. Yep, pretty much. Now I'm going to get killed by Bruce Willis tonight. <laughs> He'll show up in your door and pretend to read his lines. Yeah. He'll he'll have his lines written on his hand. He's like, are you the infamous Orion? And I'll be like, no. And we'll be like, shit. They don't keep, they didn't give me shit. a line for this. <laughs> in other news. Other news. Apparently, apparently uh, the, what was it even called? The new COVID relief thing. Oh, was shit. Was signed last night? Yeah. I heard it hadn't been signed yet, but apparently, like like everything Trump does, it happened in the middle of the night when no one was watching, and it probably happened on Twitter. I remember seeing it happen on Twitter. So where is this? This is, I believe, the six hundred dollar one. Is it? 
the one that makes streaming uh, certain stuff illegal? Yeah. Yeah. Donald Trump signed the new COVID-19 stimulus package into law on Sunday night, suddenly giving into pressure from Congress after calling the legislation a disgrace days earlier. <laughs> so this is two parts. The $900 billion emergency relief bill, including the expected, uh, including the $600 stimulus check, as well as an extension of unemployment benefits. Although those unemployment benefits, because he signed it Sunday instead of Saturday, are going to be delayed a week, as I understand it. Everybody stay home, stay safe for a week. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Don't have to pay your rent this week. Yeah. Good luck working that one out. Um, and the other $1.4 billion of it is... Is it billion? Yeah, billion. Is regular government funding for the next year. Yeah. So surprisingly, there won't be a government shutdown. It's a Christmas miracle. Yeah. Mitch McConnell can stay at his desk all week long and do nothing again. Not quite, though, because uh, Pelosi was talking about this last night. Even though this, I, I did hear this, even though this has passed now, they're still going to be pushing to addend it, amend it, ad amend it to uh, increase by $1,400 to be 2000 per person rather than 600 Good luck. So even though Mitch managed to slip by and this actually did get passed, he is still going to have to either vote on this along with the rest of the Republicans or refuse to let it come to the floor of the Senate. Hmm. Well, it doesn't affect me because I didn't get I, I got claimed as a dependent. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the same as that one where for people yeah. like me and you, we're still fucked until taxes for 2021. I'm excited for taxes this year. Right? It's going to be a crazy rebate. <laughs> oh, shit, man. I'm excited. Oh. Go buy a PS5 with all my money. All, you, all your invisible monies? Yeah. It was, it was a good thing I heard where it was someone said something like, I just got my government rebate and I went to pay a parking ticket. Government paying the government pog. <laughs> funny yeah it's pretty good i'm pretty hyped because i've got like two weeks of um constant holiday pay and some nice. overtime coming with me on tax season so my yeah. wallet's gonna be happy that week i also heard i don't know how many people this actually applies to but apparently this this year has 53 weeks and for all like not taxes, but uh, certain tax exemptions that go on to paychecks. Because there's 53 weeks instead of 52, those don't get applied to the last week's paycheck for the year. So I'll get like 10 bucks more on my paycheck next week or something. So fucking yay for that. You can buy... Um, I don't know what you can buy with $10 in this economy. I'll go buy some more Reese Trees. Reese trees. You can buy a hundred Reese trees. Really? Is it that cheap? Oh, I don't know. I'm just imagining on clearance. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Let me check this. I'm almost certain it's not. Reese trees. First one, they're out of stock. God damn it. Damn scalpers. Fucking scalpers taking the I'm Reese trees. Going to eBay. <laughs> Yo, can you buy those? Oh, geez, on eBay? That's expensive. Probably. Buy whatever you want on eBay. You can probably buy a person on eBay at this rate. So on Amazon, yes. from the recent store, you can buy a 60 count bag for $27. That seems like a bad deal. Wait. Or <laughs> you can buy it from someone else for 12 nice very nice oh no wait sorry this group has 57 percent positive ratings over the last 12 months i would not recommend shopping with them that's horrible that's like borderline scam at that point you get your reesey trees but they have uh razors in them <laughs> I personally put amphetamines in all of my Reese's candy. God. 
There's ecstasy in there. <laughs> as long as you're in Oregon, who cares? Uh, that's true. Apparently, it's about a dollar fifty per tree. What the hell? It's that's way what more expensive. That's way more. That's not right. I think everywhere's just kind of sold out in general. Damn it. Top tier holiday candy. What would it be, Cairo? Honestly, probably for me, it would probably be Reese's trees as a holiday candy. Yeah. Just because I feel like they have the perfect chocolate to peanut butter ratio. What about the uh, eggs though? Like Easter eggs. Oh, they're the same way. Same with the pumpkins too. Yeah. They're it's the same way how they're, they're big, slightly bigger and not quite as thick of walls on them. So it's just a little bit better ratio, more peanut butter in them. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> Yeah, they're all kind of the same. I don't really know anybody that could compete with Reese's in terms of holiday candy. Mm -hmm. See, for me, I would put, like, just in terms of the actual taste of it, I really like Kit Kats. But, like, they're always just Kit Kats in different color packages. It's not actually a holiday candy, I don't feel like. Um, For me, I had a birthday cake Kit Kat the other day. How was that? It was very sugary. A little too yeah. sweet on my preference, but it was okay. Yeah. I had a similar thing. It was a, what even was it? Like a cookie. It was supposed to be like a sugar cookie flavored Hershey kiss. Weird. It was not good. It tasted like just straight, like the frosting you get on loft house cookies. Oh yeah. It was like that just in a Hershey kiss form. Ew. I, I would not recommend it. It was way too sweet. It didn't taste bad. It did not taste like a cookie, though. Hmm. Just buy regular Hershey's Kisses if you're going to give them your money. Yeah. I found out I really like Crunch Bars. Crunch Bars are solid. They're decent. Yeah, they taste like slave labor. Thanks, yeah. Nestle. Do you have a favorite candy bar? Yes, the I don't even know if they still make them. Snickers peanut butter squared. Holy shit, are those good? Are they now? They are so good. They're like a an objectively better Reese's cup. How? How do you because they're basically a Reese's cup, but they have it's like a Reese's cup and a Snickers just smushed together. Really? So it's got like a little bit better chocolate, the same sort of peanut buttery layer to it but then it also has like the snickers nougat layer huh it's just good i'm about to try that now it tastes sort of in between a snickers and a reese's huh they're really good if you can find them at least i haven't been able to find them in a little while it's pretty hit or miss peanut butter snickers uh I think we still sell these at my store. They're apparently at Walgreens. Copy. These ones. Are... I love them. They're awesome. Oh, shit. I don't know why this came up, but I got an ad for Reese's 45 pounds of pay, uh, 45 pound pail of all natural smooth pourable peanut butter. What? A, Ye imagine buying your peanut butter in a pail. What I know. The fuck. <laughs> oh. Here, I'll send you the link. It's beautiful. This is worth dying for. <laughs> it's just an actual what? A hundred and sixty dollars. Only, what? Only for the most avid peanut butter fans. <laughs> if, oh, so this is like a restaurant yeah. type. Okay. Peanut butter sauce. That just sounds gross. <laughs> peanut butter Oh, they product. have a whole category for nut butter. Don't call it nut butter. <laughs> They call it nut butter. I don't. That's their term. I didn't make their website. 
you can get a five pound tub of peanut butter for eight sixty nine. Shit, I like seeing stock like wholesale stock food like this. Did you see like the bullet points of what they're selling here? No, go on. <laughs> So it's got the usual stuff, all natural peanut butter flavor for a smooth, pourable consistency, versatile ingredient in baking and culinary applications. And then it ends with bulk 45 pound pail provides an ample supply. <laughs> if you sell your product in a pail, you fucked up somewhere. Either your product is wrong or your marketing is wrong. Something is wrong. Food should not come in a pail. Ooh, do you want a Ghirardelli 25 pounds of dark coating wafers? Jeez. Wait, is it it's the wafers or the coating? It's the wafers. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, come on. Why would you want the wafers? That's like the opposite part of why people buy Ghirardelli. They buy it for the chocolate. But dude, church. It's for your church. <laughs> Dude, you can get 30 pounds of Ghirardelli uh, ground chocolate cocoa powder. I don't doubt that. That, that, that checks out. It's eighty two forty nine. That's That's a lot to snort. It'll last you a while. Yeah. Get a new high. Ooh, they have mm. items on sale. Okay, what do they got? Hmm. You want a right, 30... This, this is something I don't get. What? So there's another one of these places where you can buy a five pound bag of chopped Reese's peanut butter cups for $53. Is that actually a good deal? Like what does just regular Reese's cost? I'm not like, I've seen it for 99 cents at my store. Like this is 10 bucks per pound. That's like, let me just look up one pound Reese's. It's just going to be more crap like that because i know you can buy like a one pound reese's cup yes so you can buy 30 pounds of reese's for 122 dollars okay so that's a terrible deal that's like a markup of like four or five times it's a horrible deal just take an hour and chop up your reese's yourself you lazy restaurant owners Hey there now. We uh you're supposed to appreciate small businesses. These right are now. people buying food in pails. I have no appreciation for them anymore. <laughs> well you can get plant butter. Plant butter. Is that Fl better than nut butter? <laughs> Floral professional one pound plant butter, vegan unsalted butter, thirty six a case for seventy six forty eight. <laughs> It just sounds so unappetizing when they put it like that. Maple Leaf Farms, 24 pieces of duck leg, 20 pounds. That at least sounds like food. I'll give them that. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm getting deep in here now. I'm finding, like, the little butters that they give you to, like, toast your bread on at diners. Yeah. Yeah. Like, little containers of that. A 432 case. Of country cooked 10 grams uh, churn spread butter. $45.68. That's a lot of butter. That's a lot. That's probably a pretty good deal. Yeah. Especially for having like the individual packaging. Um, What else is there? They're just giving me, like, individual things now. I want the things that are, like, a ridiculous amounts of bulk. Um, yeah, I'm not finding anything else. Just weird stuff restaurants yeah. use. I feel like that's probably the gist of it. Just weird restaurant bulk things. Yeah. It was fun to explore for, like, five minutes. Mm -hmm. Lots of food coloring. Do you want a eight ounce frozen steak case? Twenty a case for one hundred and seven dollars and eighty eight cents. Eight ounce, so it's twenty steaks. Yes. Twenty eight ounce steaks. Yes. For a hundred and like hundred and seven. Yeah. That's not a terrible deal. 
107 divided by 20. Oh, thank you for doing it wrong, calculator. 530 for an 8-ounce steak. Do they look like decent cuts? Or does it just not even show it? It looks like decent cuts, but it looks cooked, which is why I don't believe it. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I wouldn't. If they're not, like, just absolute garbage, yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. For what you're eventually going to throw in a microwave, then put it in a pan until it's cooked properly. No. What? What? Not for steak. I'm, not, I'm making fun of how a restaurant prepares it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, just defrost it. And, yeah. Yeah, then throw it in the pan. Yep. Yep. Maybe throw it on a grill for five seconds to get the marks. Yeah. It's all about presentation, not quality. I'm not wrong. <laughs> uh, ooh, I found latte mixes for your uh, cafes. And these are all shit. No Starbucks. If this shit ain't Starbucks, it ain't coffee. Ooh, wholesale water. Shit deals. This is legitimately shit. Yeah. Yeah. Crystal Geyser Sports Cap for uh, 750 milliliter waters, 24 case. Oh, yeah. Anything with those stupid caps is going to be way overpriced. Yeah, 421 for a 24 case. Four. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably not a terrible price, but you're still overpaying for fucking water. 12 case of coconut water. 39.17. What? Yeah. Like four bucks each? Yes. That's terrible. It is. I, we sell this coconut water in my store for like 3.18. What? <laughs> That's awful. Fuck you, Webster. I'm going off. Do we have anything else before we wrap up? Uh, there's this new COVID strain in, from the UK that oh, appears yeah. to be from the UK. COVID-20. You know. And it's still COVID-19. It's just slightly different. Yeah. From what I've been hearing, the vaccines should still work on this strain since it, it's fundamentally the same. It's almost like having a small population on an island get super rapidly infected with a disease is going to lead to mutations eventually. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Fucking biology. I'm honestly surprised we haven't seen more in the U.S. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're a little more open spread. Yeah, I can see it happening in Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like New York. New York is where it all peaked at. True. It was just all COVID-19. Fair. I didn't think but about yeah, New York. But yeah, everyone's getting out. I've heard reports of it in across Europe loosely, as well as uh, Australia and South Korea. Fuck. So it's out there. Just a matter of time. And thankfully, it doesn't seem to be strictly worse than just you know regular covid in terms of symptoms it's just it transmits quicker more readily yay yep well with that being said i'm the infamous orion and i'm afraid for my life i'm cairo wash your hands wash your hands wear a damn mask i didn't put mask on these sprites because they're fucking beautiful but yeah. Wear a goddamn mask. And this has been the Tushmo Show.